Okay, so hello again everybody. Um, the time has come to deal with this cooling issue. So that's my next big, big project. Um, and what I've decided to do, I was did some investigation and, and um, research and stuff, and Provo, Prevo, whatever you want to call them, their newer buses are have electric fans. Um, I have never been able to find any kind of information on how many CFM are required to cool an engine, you know, per horsepower or whatever. So I've just been guessing. So the system I have here right now is uh, 12,000 CFM. And the Provost Prevo, I guess you call it, depending on where you're from, they use, uh, they have six 2500 CFM fans for 18,000 CFM. So, going by that, I'm a third approximately, uh, you know, not enough airflow. The other problem is these factory uh, radiators are very thick. They're seven cores deep. So an electric fan has a hard time pulling enough air through that. So who knows whether I'm even getting a full 12,000 CFM. Um, so what I'm going to do is, and I, and I looked into two uh, factory radiators bigger ones you know that uh, would cool the horsepower because that's the other problem is I these are for a 275 to 300 horsepower 8b71 and this is a 400 horsepower hopped up 6v92 so um, anyways my plan is to pull these radiators out and I okay so I, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit um, the bigger the radiators that would handle it um, are uh, well everything I've been able to find is uh, about four three to four thousand bucks a piece so you know six to eight thousand dollars now maybe you could find some used one somewhere or something I don't know who knows but they have the same problem they're they're uh, they're thick they're seven cores uh, deep so what I've decided to do and on uh, and also Provo has they have a big but thin radiator I'm not sure how many cores they are four or five uh, row cores so I'm not really sure about that but I know that there are a thinner radiator more surface area but not as not as thick not as deep I guess I guess you get my finger out of the way shouldn't I so anyways my plan is to I'm gonna put and they're gonna be delivered today have four radiators in two on each side butted together they'll look like you know one big radiator two big radiators but they are they're four rows thick rather than seven double the uh or over double the surface area i think they're about 25 percent more surface area than these ones plus one extra core so or, or row in the core so that should be plenty and then i'm going to also uh, double the fans so I've got I'll be ordering I haven't ordered them yet but uh, I'll be ordering two more of these electric fans um, well this isn't going to work for the majority of you guys because you don't have the room you know to stock this one I'm okay because I've got you know I extended the bus five feet so I've got more more room um, but unfortunately, you know, what I'm going to do isn't going to work for most people, so you just have to, uh, I mean, it'd be nice if a guy could switch, everybody could just switch to electric fans, but, um, pretty hard to, to come up with the, the area in a, in a stock bus, so, anyways, um, that's what I'm going to do, and, um, and hopefully it all works. Um, I don't know if you guys watch the bus grease monkey or not, um, but Scott there, he recommends also 
having a mud flap all the way across behind the drive axle. I think maybe I'll put it just ahead or just behind or ahead, whatever you want to call it, of the engine there, all the way across uh, down to the ground, and then that that uh, creates a bit of a of a uh, low pressure area back in this area here. So I'm going to give that a try as well. Um, anyhow, so my project or my job for today is to pull all this stuff out. I'm going to pull the radiators out, pull the fans out, and uh, get it all prepped and ready for when the the, the uh, new radiators show up, which is like I say, they're supposed to be showing up today, um, but uh, I haven't seen them yet. But um, these other radiators are a little bit taller as well so that's going to be a bit of a challenge i've got a maybe i'll have to angle him in there i'm not really sure i'll have to get these all out of here and then uh, what i'm going to do is up where i've got those landing lights that panel there i'm going to put the other so that whole area on both sides will be will be radiator so um yeah that's my job for today well, more than today, but <laughs> starting today. Anyhow, I'll just uh, video this as we uh, as we go. All right, so I'm making a little bit of progress here. I don't a firecracker out here today. Um, so that basically those are the radiators I got. They came in today. Um, so I'm going to put them side by side, one set of fans on each radiator, and then I'll tee them in and out the, uh, <coughs> the, the um, inlet and return, so I'll just get some stainless, same as I did last time, get some stainless pieces made up. And just tee them somewhere in the middle here and then go to each side same on the bottom uh, however I'm gonna end up losing my toolboxes here which kind of sucks but what do you do I was thinking I was gonna put it up in here move it up into here but I forgot the mufflers in the way so can't really do that. I could move it some up here, but there's so much rigmarole to do that. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm just gonna put one in this compartment where the other radiator was, and then build a another compartment back here for the second one, and then put a grill right over top of the whole thing. Hopefully that works. So the we're gonna have two radiators like that on each side <clears throat> to replace. Oops. Of course, to replace one radiator like that on each side. So you can see that this the cores on this are substantially bigger however they're only like I say these are this radiator is seven cores deep these are four cores deep and uh, there's about 25 percent more surface air or that's not really even accurate if you took this radiator apart and turned it into two four core radiators these are about 25 percent bigger if that makes any sense because these are a seven core these are a four core so anyways i'm hoping that that uh that does the job i don't see why it wouldn't and then plus these are these are copper 
and uh, these new radiators are all aluminum which are apparently quite a bit more efficient so hopefully that gets rid of my heating issue so I'll continue on this with this tomorrow so I guess I have to figure out a way to get it up into this the into this uh, area here and work around the exhaust system somehow or other on this side because I believe that's going to be a lot easier than the alternative back here which I you know kind of forgot the upper section of the the uh, compartment back here is full of spray foam and uh, my heating ducts and everything for the furnace are all up in there um, on this side and the other side hang on a second here so this side here if you can kind of see I have it down so my heating ducting can go above the opening the compartment for the radiator which is fine even on this side because the radiator has to go in at an angle anyway so if the radiator goes at an angle like this here and I do the same thing I just have the the uh, you know have it tapered down like that that's fine it's not a problem but I can't go behind this radiator I have to come in front of it or I have to cut out Hang on here. So the only way I could get it to to work back in here would be to cut out all this aluminum, cut out all the spray foam, redo this panel here. It's all full of spray foam on the top side, and. Uh, rebuild all this area and I don't really I don't think I want to get into that that's uh, I think I can make it work up front it's gonna be tight but I think I can do it um, and I was thinking that I had forgotten that I had dropped the um, see if you see in here you can see where the the actual, you know, the height of the, if you want to call it the floor, was right there. And here, it's down probably four inches. And this goes straight, straight through on the other side. So this toolbox opening here um, is not, yeah, it's just not going to work. So I'm going to have to go up, take the rest of this out of here, and uh, go up to the, work around the exhaust somehow or other. I'll uh, have to figure that out. This side's no big deal, it's all open. But uh, this side is more of a challenge. But where there's a will, there's a way. All right, well, I'm back again. Uh, a little further along here. Got all the parts and pieces and fabricated and fit in here for uh, how I'm going to mount these rads. Um, so I've got all the pieces here like I say and I'll so now I'll just pull this out of here and uh, just duplicate these parts three more times. Um, yeah so I've got um, what I'm going to do is it, it's, it uh, wedges in up at the top so there's rubber mounted um, and then on the bottom here I've got it sits in a in this little tray here uh, and again it's rubber mounted quarter inch rubber and then I haven't I've ordered the piece of the bolts and I got I mean use um, uh, rib nuts nut certs what do you want to call them for uh, to bolt this top panel here on and so I'm just going to drop it into place and then put uh, probably three or four bolts across here 
just to, and that'll just wedge it and hold it in place there. And then, and then I'll, you know, I'll put a grill over top of the, uh, uh, over top of the whole thing. Um, and they're all four places on the bottom are the same. So I'll just go ahead and, and duplicate. So one more red will slit up there. Same thing on the other side. So um, <clears throat> I don't know how much shows up in this camera, but you know, there's kind of what I fabricated up there for, uh, for uh, the top mount. Uh, this is, I need some more rivets in there. So I just got it. I'm going to just, it's all riveted in. I just drill those rivets out. Use all those, you know, or uh, duplicate all those pieces and then, um, and then I can just rivet them back in again. Um, so that's for the radiators. And then I was work, I've also been working on over here, mounting the fans. So at this point I only have two fans, but what I'm gonna do, I had to, so these, these uh, fan shrouds are a little bit bigger than the radiator cores, so I'm going to mount them and I'm going to mount them rather than being in a separate compartment that's sealed off like I had before. I'm going to mount them right directly to the to the, the rad cores. Um, be less, way less fiddling around than what I did last time. Uh, there was so much uh, aluminum work and sealing and all that kind of stuff to seal the cavity between the radiator and the and the fans and you know to be perfectly honest i don't even know if i got all the all this you know there could have been pulling air through some you know something i missed i don't know who knows so this will be a lot a lot uh better the fans are going to be mounted directly to the back of the radiator <coughs> um and as because they're a little bit longer uh they're basically the same length as the radiator not just the radiator core so what I had to do is kind of trim out, it's, it's all in behind this rubber seal again, but trim out the shape of the, up in here, so that when this goes down and seals, and plus the, um, the top rad mount also, you know, has to sit in here, and it all has to seal. So I had to trim it all out, and, and uh, when it's all in there, I test fit it and, and it seals up really good. All I'm going to do here is just use these tabs that came with them. And they've got a hole right through there. I'll just run a bolt through there, suck that down against the, uh, the core to seal it. And I'll have to drill this one down in here. So I'll just drill another hole right in here. Same as that, just down here, and then run a bolt through there, and I can just sandwich that right in there. And I think that'll work, work fine. Um, so that's my story for now. Um, I've got uh, the other, the other little bit of a hiccup is uh, the the um, these have an inch and a half. Uh, fittings and the you know everything I've got built so far is all inch and three quarters so I have some reducers for the hose to go on there that should be that should work fine um, anyways that's as far as I've gotten so far took a fair amount of time you know just head scratching and fitting and and you know kind of trying to come up with a plan for how to mount these things so, but it's, well, you know, and for, so the, this rad's in here right now, but this has to be riveted. These two piece have, pieces have to be riveted here yet, too. So, I'll do that once I have, uh, you know, it goes in permanently, then I'll, I will uh, rivet that across there, too. But for now, I'll just drill these rivets out, take that piece off. I got two or maybe three rivets 
on the top, you know, on the other side. Drill those out, take that out of there, and then I can just use the pieces just to duplicate three more times. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. So I'll, uh, when I get a little farther along here, I'll, uh, I will uh, take some more video. All right, as you saw in the last little segment here, I got one radiator mounted and had all the pieces made up. So now I'm just in the process of duplicating those uh, pieces three more times. So this is the last of the pieces that I'm just cutting out of some aluminum stock. And uh, then I'll go down to the, to the brake and uh, bend them up. And then I can start installing them. So just a little short little filler piece here. Anyways, more later. And this is a lot of fiddling around. <laughs> but it's starting to kind of take shape there now. That's basically one side. Then I'll fill uh, both sides, seal them up uh, to the outside here on that side. Well, all the way around actually, just so that so that uh, any air that goes in there has to go through the radiators. Um, I don't know how much positive pressure differential there'll be without the fans, but whatever there is. I'd like it to go through the radiators, not around them, so I'll seal them up, kind of like the other rads were. I wasn't initially going to do that, because the fans are going to be right up against the back of the radiator, and they should pull plenty of air, but when a guy's traveling down the freeway at, you know, 70, 75 miles an hour, if there's a pressure there, and, the, you know, there's enough airflow through the radiators that the fans can shut off, then that would be, that would be better, so... Anyway, just plugging away a little bit at a time. All right, so I'm working on the passenger side here now. Uh, and it's all pretty much mounted here. What I ended up doing is using rib nuts in here and then putting button head stainless screws in um, the other side I have to do again or do yet I just have it riveted and uh, the rivets just aren't the thing to use here um, if I want to take a radiator out you know I gotta take this panel here off and then there just isn't enough clearance to remove the radiator with this, I don't know if you can see it in here, but the lower support in, in there. So what I have to do is then unbolt that and then drop it out. So um, because it's in at a 45 degree angle, when you try and pull it out, it just, there's interference that doesn't let it come out. So not that a guy's gonna have to, to uh, do anything, uh, you know, pull these out very often, but you know, if you, if, if you do, well, then there's a, a way to do it um, and they all got to come out one more time anyways I have uh, uh, some different rubber coming uh, the stuff I have I don't know well for one thing I don't have enough of it but also um, they have, so all this will be encased in rubber between the you know the aluminum mounts and the, the radiator so there's no no um, friction there there's the same thing here. I'll seal this with rubber, with, with this aluminum plate, and then uh, put rubber in behind it and, and then rivet that on. And uh, same thing from here to, to this bulkhead. Um, then that will seal that up. That up there is going to be a bit of a challenge, sealing that all up with, with rubber, but um, I'll figure it out. And uh, this other bulkhead, i got to clean that all up. And it needs to go, it's going to go in here on this side. And then I'll do the same thing, seal it with rubber. Um, 
So the radiators are pretty much mounted, like I say, except for I gotta drill out and swap these rivets here for rib nuts. I rib nutted the, you know, this piece here on, thinking that I could just take this off and then just pull it out and, and drop it out, but it just doesn't work. There's not enough room to do that, so. So, uh, but that's just a, that won't take long. Just knock these out, put rivets, rib nuts and, uh, and bolts in it, and then, you know, and then these can, can uh, just be unbolted and removed. Uh, so I'm just about to the point where I can start installing fans. Of course, you know, I haven't, I've only got two of them so far. I haven't uh, been able to afford to, to uh, buy the other two yet. They're 600 and some bucks a piece and it's starting to rain, so I'm going to have to go inside here pretty quick. Uh, but these are, yeah, they're a little over 600 bucks a, a set. I have two, so I need two more. Um, so I haven't been able to, to do that yet. And then I have to order all the the uh, stainless pipe to uh, to hook all this stuff up. And like I said before, I don't have the equipment to uh, TIG weld it, so I'll have to take it to. There's a shop down the road here that's done some welding for me before, so I'll get them to do it. Um, as long as I have the time, then I'll, you know, these are the, these are what I had made up before. Um, so I will salvage as much of that as these as I can. There's, but I'm going to four radiators rather than two, so I'll need some more parts and pieces and some T's and that kind of stuff. So anyways, I'm getting wet, so I'm going inside. So I got all the radiators mounted here now. I have one of the fans up into place. Of course, again, temporarily, because the bolts I bought were too long, of course. So, uh, but it, it, you know, it, that's just a mock-up anyway, so it's, it's gonna work. Um, so I get to order some shorter bolts and figure out what I need for what I can salvage out of this tubing and what else I need and uh, an order that fun and games but it's coming along anyway it's uh, first yeah first I guess we're into the second week of, of August here now, so I don't know whether I'll get this done in time to be able to use it at all this year or not. It was my, my hope that I would be able to, but who knows. I got another $2,000 or so of parts to buy, and so money's not, uh, doesn't grow on trees, so I we'll, uh, can just do it as I can afford it. Anyways, keep you all updated as I make progress, if you want to call it that. Alright, well, here's what happens when you make one little stinking mistake. Well, well, it shows up in the video here, but what I was doing is putting the this jack stand under the bottom of the radiator of each radiator as I installed it you know when as I fit all the pieces and and whatnot just to hold the hold it in place and after I did the last one here I forgot to take it out and just to give me clearance you know more room to work under here I had the bus aired up and you can probably guess what happened I left the jack stand under there and then I disconnected the air supply and let the bus settle with the jack stand under there and bent this all to smithereens. 
I don't think it did any damage to the radiator. It doesn't look distorted at all. I'll do a pressure test on it and make sure that it's okay, but I, I think it's going to be fine. It's just all the mounting brackets and stuff, but now I get to tear this all apart. Straighten out or replace the pieces that are bent. And put it all back together again. Fun. <sighs> Which happens when you make a little mistake. Anyway, not the end of the world. And I uh, figured out what I needed for all the pieces, the fittings and whatnot to uh, do all the plumbing and uh, got those ordered turned into almost almost a thousand dollars for stainless inch and three quarters stainless fittings that I then have to get welded up so Yeah, this is not a project for the faint of heart, but it's got to be done. What are you going to do? It's still, you know, the factory radiators that would have worked, it's still going to be half the cost of that or, or less. So, oh, well, well, more, well, more than half less. There were $4,000 per radiator, and uh, that didn't include the fans. You know any, any kind of fan system so then you know a guy's got to build either a miter box belt driven miter box setup or hydraulic or whatever so this is still way cheaper but <laughs> it's still it adds up anyways that's where i'm at for now i'm gonna get out here and fix that the mounting brackets there. He busted the busted the uh, rivets out up top there. Pushed on on that upper bracket and popped that out. Um, like I say, I don't think it's damaged the radiator, but but I don't know that for sure yet. But anyway, nothing that can't be fixed. If anybody ever says that. Rib nuts don't hold. You can show them that. They definitely hold. <laughs> Just starting to take it apart here now. See how it goes. All right, so I got it all straightened out. <laughs> Reattach, put back together. Was able to uh, just straighten it all. I didn't have to replace anything, so it was not as big a job as I thought it was going to be. Rivets that are that were popped up there. We I switched to stainless steel rivets. The aluminum ones just weren't holding well enough. So, which in this particular case was good because it allowed them to pop pop out rather than doing more damage. But um, on a you know when it's in there permanently stainless rivets are are better so that's what I switched to and I'm just gonna stick the radiator back in again and I got the rubber so I can do the uh, you know put the rubber padding here there and wherever it needs to be I have it uh, glued up in there on the on the up top part, upper part, but I haven't done the bottom yet here yet, so that'll be next. All right, so there's the first upper manifold mocked up into place. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll make the other three, and then uh, when we when I take it to the welding shop I'll just take a razor knife and cut a little hole in about three places on each each one of these 
and uh, and then tack the uh, you know tack the, the pieces together then they can pull the tape off and weld it all up so ta -da. <laughs> this is uh, video is getting pretty long so I think I'll uh, make it in two parts I'll put this together and put it up and then uh, I'll start another one got all the pieces well almost all the pieces uh, except for the other two fans I haven't uh, I haven't ordered them yet but the uh, all of the uh, stainless pieces are showing up except except two pieces and hopefully they show up fairly soon anyways that's it for now or later as usual